in this session let us go more further in the design of the memory logic we been in fact discussing the cache memory the cache memory you know that it is going to compensate the speed differences between cpu and the main memory right cpu is faster but main memory is very slower so in order to compensate the speed differences between cpu and the main memory we use small but an efficient cache memory <music> Okay, so here when it comes to the cache memory, it is going to compensate the difference between main memory access and the CPU processor logic. Okay, so here, uh, let us have a small comparison between the auxiliary memory versus cache memory. Okay, that is, uh, when it comes to the auxiliary memory, the auxiliary memory is going to store all the programs at a stretch because at any point of period, the number of programs that you're going to have will definitely be more than that of the size of the main memory. for that reason we need to have a bigger storage area to initially to store the programs not to execute when you want to execute a program this program will get transferred from a secondary memory to the main memory but when it comes to the cache memory the cache memory is going to compensate uh, differences between main memory and a cpu and it is going to hold the data items that are required by the cpu currently so here when it comes to the cache memory holds the data holds the data element uh, used currently okay so auxiliary memory holds the data not used presently but cache memory holds the data which is used presently okay hold the data heavily used by the cpu hold the data heavily used by the cpu is a property of cache memory this is a property of cache memory okay and this is the property of you know auxiliary memory cpu direct access to cache and main memory but not to the auxiliary memory of course cpu will have a direct access to the cache memory and main memory you know why because there is an access ratio that is 1 is to 7 is to 7 lakhs these days okay so what is 1 is to 7 is to 7 lakhs if uh, in order to search for a data element if it takes one clock cycle to search in the cache memory the same data element will take as many as seven clock cycles in the main memory but if the same data has to be found out in secondary memory it may take as many as seven lakhs clock cycle it can go till seven lakhs clock cycles because in the advanced days of the uh, computer architecture the difference between secondary memory and main memory is immense okay so in the initial days main memory size was just around you know 256 mb in the initial days and uh, secondary memory size is maximum of let us say not even 1 gb sometimes it may be 512 mb okay something like that so here the difference the size difference between main memory and secondary memory is very less so the access difference will be also um, proportionately less but here now you can clearly understand the secondary memory is going to any extent that is that is even crossing 2 tb but the main memory is not crossing around 4 gb or 8 gb okay so the access difference is exponentially getting increased so that means that uh, nowadays the access ratio of the cache memory to the main memory main memory to the secondary memory is potentially getting increased okay the access difference of cache memory to the main memory is 1 is to 7 the access difference of uh, main memory to secondary memory is nowadays 1 is to 7000 so which can get translated to 1 is to 7 is to 7 lakhs so that is the reason why cpu will never communicate with secondary memory directly rather it always accesses the data from the main memory only okay now um is clearly see here initially the data will get stored here in the secondary memory devices okay when you want to execute a program that program must be transferred to the main memory okay and initially cpu wants to access the data from the cache memory of course cache memory initially it doesn't have anything so cpu will access the data directly from the main memory okay meanwhile the data will also be transferred to the cache memory for the future references because the data which is accessed currently may also be accessed in the near future okay for that reason 
CPU should transfer the data from main memory to cache memory. For an example, CPU is searching for a word. That is, let us say um, some x, 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 x. Okay, this is, let us say, this is one instruction. It is searching for the CPU, searching for this instruction. Initially, cache will be searched. Okay, but cache memory is not going to produce uh, the required instruction by the CPU because initially cache memory doesn't have any data. So CPU directly will get the data from main memory. Okay, as during this process, CPU is going to read the data directly from the main memory. But meanwhile, the instruction that is accessed currently may also be accessed in the near future. For that reason, this instruction will have to be transferred to the cache memory. This is the funda of accessing anything from memory hierarchy. Okay, initially, it will be searched in the cache first, but cache memory is going to throw a miss. Because initially, you don't find the data what you're searching for, for the first time in the cache memory. So initially, cache gonna say no. During that time, CPU is going to read the data directly from the main memory. But when you access the data now, the data may also be accessed in the near future. For that reason, as it is getting accessed, the data will also be transferred to the cache memory. Okay, so cache memory will have the data. You know the CPU registers? CPU registers will provide the internal storage provision to the CPU because every time CPU is executing an instruction, that instruction with the associated data must be present within the CPU. Those registers, the registers that are available within the CPU are going to provide the storage logic for holding the current instruction and the associated data, which is being executed concurrently. Okay, so that this is what the memory hierarchy. Okay, after which, let us dive into one important concept of designing RAM and ROM chips. That is, we are going to design the main memory now. You know that the main memory is a collection of RAM and ROM, right? RAM and ROM. The main memory is a collection of RAM and ROM. You already know that. Okay. Now, what is ROM? We will have a look at later. Now, what is RAM? Everybody can give me an answer. RAM is a random access memory. Okay. Uh, there is some, you know, small interpretation. The way the data is being accessed in RAM and ROM, that is, you people, uh, you know, might not be familiar with how the data is going to be exactly getting accessed from both RAM and ROM. Okay, I will come to that point how the data is being accessed in a short while. But meanwhile, we will see what is a RAM. Okay, what is a RAM? RAM stands for random access memory, right? I will write it here, random access memory. Okay. What is random access? Okay, when an address is being referenced by the CPU, this address will be searched randomly. How, let us say, I'm going to show you. This is, let us say, a small main memory. This main memory has 100 addresses, 0 to 100. Okay, now CPU want to search for an address 23. Okay, when CPU want to search for an address 23, it tries to um, find out this address randomly. That means that, in the main memory, some address, some random addresses will be searched. That is, initially, we're going to go for, you know, 93. Is 93 equal to the address reference? No. Then we go to any, any other random reference, that is, 3. Is 3 equal to 23? No. Then, 48. 48 is equal to 23? No. So, then finally, we may arrive to the address that is desired by the CP. 23 is 23 is equal to 23? Yes. So, when a corresponding address reference is exactly matched, then the value under that address reference, or the data element under that address, will be accessed by the CPU. This is the reason why we are going to call it as a random access memory. Again, what is random access memory? Randomly, when an address has been referenced, some addresses will be searched in the main memory. Randomly. Some random addresses will be released by the controller. Each and every random address will be searched for the actual address reference. When there is an exact match, if the address is exactly located, then 
the data under that address will be read by the cpu that is the reason why it is called random access memory it is not sequential access what is sequential access access this reference will be searched right from the first address to the last address so definitely sequential access takes more time right in the worst possible scenario the access length is 100 accesses because what if the address reference is 100 so each and every time and right from the beginning if you start with the final address that is going to be reached is 100 so definitely sequential access doesn't gonna work so that's the reason why we go for random access memory okay so this is uh, all about random access memory there are two kinds of rams one is static ram and one more is dynamic ram what do you mean by static ram the static ram is designed with semiconductor chips the static ram is de designed with the semiconductor chips okay i will write it here semiconductor chips you know what is semiconductor semiconductor is an antimony or germanium that is which requires electricity which requires power as long as the power is available in this static ram your data is available the moment you lose the power you are going to lose every data within the static ram okay so the static ram is made up of internal flip flop of storing the binary information as it is shown here shorter read and write cycles i mean the data can be accessed quite faster used for implementing cache memory we use rams for implementing the cache memory okay on the other hand there is something called a dynamic ram these dynamic ram chips are going to be constructed by using capacitors what is a capacitor capacitor is like a battery okay you will have to charge it once after the capacitors are charged till it gets discharged it is going to give you the data okay that require that means that even the power is lost the data will still be available in the dynamic ram okay because it is based on capacitor technology what is a capacitor capacitor tends to get charged and discharged the moment you charge the capacitor it is ready for data storage okay and the data is available in the dynamic ram as long as the charge in the capacitors is sustained that means that even though you lost the power you don't lose the data you don't lose the data at all that is simply because the capacitors are charged till it gets completely discharged you are going to have your data available in the particular ram chip which is constructed by using capacitor technology okay so this is all about dynamic ram okay now um let us talk about read only memory the difference between ram and rom is not the way by these chips are accessed the difference between ram and rom is not the way by the chips are accessed but rather it is by the way the chips are used in some operations i will tell you ram is random access memory right that means addresses will, will be released randomly in rom also addresses will be released randomly okay there is no sequential access business there is no sequential access business there is no sequential access stop if there is no sequential access everything must be random access so rom also is random access right the addresses within rom also must be accessed randomly okay so the difference the actual difference is the operation that are being performed on the chips okay on ram we can read as well as write from the ram we can read as well as we can perform writing but in read only memory we can just read only reading will be performed we can't write at all this is the thing okay so what is ram here the ram is not going to lose the data you know that ram either it is static ram or dynamic ram eventually when you shut down the system your ram is going to lose the data there is no doubt about it if it in the case of a dynamic ram the data is going to be available for a little more time but eventually ram is going to lose the data right but ram doesn't lose the data ram will not lose the data at all okay so why do we require our ram try to understand there is there are a few essential programs that are needed to be stored 
in the computer system all the time right that is when you uh, switch on the computer system first of all operating system will be loaded okay i will show you somewhere by taking i'll, I'll show you here first of all when you boot a computer system these are the events that are going to be happen let us say this is ram the first thing that is going to be loaded is operating system okay next thing is let us say system programs next thing is application programs and next thing is user space okay when you load the system when you uh, boot the system all these will get loaded okay now let us say you shut down the system the system has been switched off what does it mean this is ram right the moment you shut down the system each and everything is going to be erased right so when you start the system again you require the operating system to be present in the main memory if there is no operating system our computer system is for no use our computer system is useless unless you do have an operating system available in a computer system there is no way you can use the computer system for that reason we need to load the operating system initially okay when you start the system the first thing that is going to be done is to load the operating system into the ram but what is ram that's it ram is going to have the operating system the moment uh, it is switched on it is going to lose the operating system the moment it is shut down okay now when it comes to rom rom is going to store some essential program that should never be erased that can never be erased in the system okay so one of the example of such programs such important program that can never be erased is something called a bootstrap loader what is a bootstrap loader uh, let me take a the help of a story by using which i'm going to explain you guys about a bootstrap loader thank you